The ultimate way to determine the efficacy and safety of a vaccine is to compare over a period of time the mortality rate for those who are vaccinated with those who are unvaccinated. If the mortality rate for the vaccinated is lower than that of the unvaccinated, then the vaccination benefits outweigh the risks. The problem is, if you see a study which does claim a lower mortality rate for the vaccinated, you need to be very careful of the way the data was collected and analysed, because it could well be the case that survivor bias is creating a pure statistical illusion of a decreased mortality rate for the vaccinated. And what I'm going to show in this short example is exactly how this survivor bias statistical illusion comes about and how we can overcome it to get unbiased comparisons. This simple example is going to demonstrate how a vaccine, which is just a placebo, so it has no impact whatsoever whether you get it or not, is certain to result in a reduced mortality rate for those who get it, but it's a pure statistical illusion. We're going to suppose that in any six-month period, one in ten people die from some new deadly virus. And suppose a vaccine, which is just a placebo, is made available. So it doesn't matter whether you get it or not, it's still the case that one in ten people in any six-month period are going to die from the virus. Jabs of the vaccine are offered at the start of the year and after six months. And for simplicity, we're going to assume that everybody who gets the first jab and survives until the end of month six also gets the second jab. So let's suppose that at the start of the year, we've got 1,000 people that we're observing. 900 of them don't get the vaccination in the first period, so 900 are unvaccinated in the first six months, and 100 get the vaccination. So 100 are vaccinated in the first six months. So at the end of the six months... 10% of the unvaccinated, which is 90, are going to die, so 810 survive. And of the 100 who got vaccinated at the start of the period, 10 will die, so 90 are going to survive. Let's suppose that in the second six months, 400 of those who survived from the unvaccinated group remain unvaccinated, but 410 get their first jab. And we've assumed that all of those who got the first jab in the first six months and who survived go on to get the second jab. So there were 90 who survived, and that means 90 get the double jab. So what happens at the end of the period? Well, of the 400 who were unvaccinated at the start of that second six months, 40 are going to die, so 360 will survive. Again, it's the same 10%. And of the 410 who got their first jab at the end of six months, 41 of those will die, 369 will survive. And of the double jabbed, Nine of those will die and 81 will survive. So now, let's look at the data that we've got. After 12 months, what have we got? Well, we've got a total of 490 who are never vaccinated because we have the 90 who died in the first six months. They were never vaccinated. We've got the 40 who died in the second six months and the 360 who survived. That's a total of 490. 90 plus 40 plus 360 that's 490. How many of them died? Well, 90 died there, 40 died here, so that's 130. So the mortality rate for the never vaccinated is 26.5%. That's just 130 divided by 490. What about the ever vaccinated? There are 510 of these because we've got the, the 10 who died here and the 500, that's the 410 who got their first jab and the 90 who got their second jab in the second period. That's a total of 510. How many died? Well, we've got 10 died here, 41 died here, that's 51, and nine of these died. So that's a total of 60. So the mortality rate for the ever vaccinated is 60 divided by 510, which is 11.8%. And so we've got this ridiculous situation that the mortality rate for the never vaccinated is over twice that of the ever vaccinated, even though the vaccine has no impact whatsoever. It doesn't make any difference. And why have we got that? Well, it's because of the survivor bias coming in here. All of these who got the jab for the first time at six months had already survived the first six months. In fact, it's even worse when we separate the single jabbed and the double jabbed. Because in this case, well, the never vaccinated is the same. But what about the single jabbed? Well, there were 410 single jabbed 
in that second period, but there were also 10 single jabs who died in the first period. So we've got a total of 420 who were vaccinated just once, of whom 10 died here, 41 died here. That's 51. So the mortality rate for the single jab is 51 over 420, which is 12.1%. What about the double jabbed? Well, there were only 90 of these, of whom just nine died. So the mortality rate for the double jabbed is just 10%. So what we've got is the mortality rate decreases the more jabs people get, even though the vaccine is a placebo. So this is clearly an unsatisfactory illusion created simply because of the way that we're counting the never vaccinated and the jabbed. How do we get round it? Well, we get round it by considering person years spent in each category rather than number of people. So in the first six months, we know that 900 were unvaccinated. So that's equivalent to 450 person years never vaccinated because it was only six months, that's half a year. And we know that 100 were single jabbed in the first six months, which is equivalent to 50 person years single jabbed. And in the last six months, we know that there were 400 never vaccinated, which is equivalent to 200 person years never vaccinated. 410 were single jabbed, which is equivalent to 205 person years single jab, because we say well, these are just half years. 90 were double jabbed, that's equivalent to 45 person years double jabbed. So now let's run the mortality rates again. What about the never vaccinated? Well, we've got 450 person years there, we've got 200 person years there, that's a total of 650 person years. How many dead? 130. So 130 divided by 650 is 20%. What about the single jabbed? Well, we've got 50 person years there, 205 person years in the second period. That's 255 person years. How many of the single jabbed are dead? Well, there's the 10 there and there's the 41 there. So that's 51 dead from 255 person years. And what about the double jabbed? There's just 45 person years of those and nine dead. 9 divided by 45 is 20%. So it should be the case, we've got exactly the same mortality rate for each of the different categories.